All right, we're continuing with our Regents review for Unit 3, Moles and Stoichiometry. All right, so first, a little review. Well, I guess it's all review, but a little review review on a compound is a substance composed of two or more elements chemically combined in a fixed proportion. Right, that fixed proportion is an important thing that students usually forget. And also, a compound can only be broken down by chemical means. Okay, so first kind of compound we're going to talk about is an ionic compound. If you remember, an ionic compound is a metal bonded with a non-metal. And when we name it, we use the name of the metal, so the metal keeps its name. And the non-metal, the ending of the name is going to change to ide. Right, so for example, NaCl. Sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. becomes sodium chloride. Okay. Now when you're figuring out the numbers of each element, we have to crisscross. So let's say we're doing sodium chloride, for example. Right? Na, its oxidation state will be plus 1. Chloride, its oxidation state will be minus 1. And when we crisscross, we get Na1Cl1 or NaCl. If we have calcium chloride, okay, all right, calcium, which is group 2, so it's going to be plus 2. Chloride, group 17, so it'll be minus 1, and we crisscross there, we get Ca1Cl2. So calcium chloride is CaCl2. All right, so when we have things that are covalently bonded, or molecular, that's between a non-metal and a non-metal, we use prefixes. Okay, one is mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven hept, eight oct, nine non, and ten dec or deca. Okay. So if we have uh, something like OF2, the oxygen, 2, so difluoride. Okay, so we can, we don't have to use the mono here in front of the first one. We don't have to say mon oxygen difluoride. We can just say oxygen difluoride because the mon is understood. Right, if we do CO2, it's carbon two, so dioxide. Okay, so different types of formulas. We have empirical formulas. They're going to show the elements in the simplest whole number ratio. Okay, and it may or may not be the same as the molecular formula, which shows the actual number of atoms present in the molecule. Okay. Uh, and then you have a structural formula, 
which shows the actual number of atoms and their physical arrangement. Okay? So let's say now we take a molecule like so. Right, this would be the structural formula. Okay, the molecular formula will be C4H10. The empirical formula would be C2H5, which is just the 4 and the 10 simplified to 2 and 5. Now, a common question that you'll get will be, you'll be given an empirical formula, and the molecular mass, and you'll have to figure out the molecular formula. Okay? So let's say you're given an empirical formula. We'll go with C2H5 that we're using, and a molecular mass of 58 grams per mole. And you have to figure out the molecular formula. Okay? So there's important steps you're going to follow. First step, write out the empirical formula. Okay? So empirical formula. Then you write out the empirical mass. Well, the empirical mass of this, right? C is 2 times 12 equals 24. H is 5 times 1 equals 5, so the empirical mass is 29 grams. Then we write out the molecular mass we've been given, which is 58, and divide the molecular mass divided by the empirical mass. And that gives us 2. And we're going to use this as a multiplier times these subscripts. So we multiply 2 times 2, get C4, 2 times 5, H10. And that's the molecular formula. Okay, next. Yeah. Yeah, I feel what number we're up to. That doesn't matter. All chemical equations slash reactions show a conservation of mass, energy, and charge. Okay? We balance equations because of the conservation of mass. We do redox balancing equations because of charge. Okay, so we balance equations to make sure the atoms on the left is equal to the atoms on the right. And we do it, we balance equations by changing coefficients, not subscripts. Common example, right? hydrogen plus oxygen makes water. We look here, we see there's two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right, two oxygens on the left, only one on the right. So we put a two in front of the water, so the two is our coefficient here. Now we have two oxygens on the right and two oxygens on the left, but we have four hydrogens on the right and only two on the left, so if we had a two as a coefficient here, now we're balanced. Four hydrogens, four hydrogens, two oxygens, two oxygens. Now these coefficients in front can give us what's called our mole ratio. Okay? Now there's two hydrogens for every one oxygen. There will be a mole ratio. Two moles of hydrogen to one mole of oxygen. There's one mole of oxygen to every two moles of water. That would be another mole ratio. 
there's two moles of hydrogen to every two moles of water, which is the same as one to one. Okay. All right, molar mass. Like we did just a few moments ago, the molar mass is the sum of the masses of the elements in a formula. But now, but it's expressed as grams. And since it's molar mass, it's grams per mole. Okay, so if you take glucose C6H12O6, carbon is 6 times 12, which is the mass of carbon. Hydrogen is 1, I'm sorry, 12 times 1, that's 12 hydrogens times the mass of each hydrogen, which is 1. Oxygen is going to be 6 times 16. So we get 72 plus 12 plus 96. 84, 180 grams per mole for glucose. Okay. Next, percent by mass. Let's say you were asked, what's the percent by mass of oxygen in glucose? Well, when you look at table T on the reference table, you see percent composition. Percent composition by mass is the mass of the part over the mass of the whole times 100. Well, in this case, the mass of the part, since we're doing oxygen, we already calculated 96, is the mass of the oxygen. The mass of the whole is the mass of everything, 180 times 100. I would use my phone as a calculator right now, except I am using the phone to record this. So you just plug into a calculator. 96 divided by 180, you're going to get about 0 0.52, 0.53 times 100 for about 53%. However, frequently on the region, so it'll simply ask you for a correct numerical setup, and that would be a correct numerical setup. Okay. Last but not least, our reaction types. I shall start with that. So, reaction types. First one is synthesis. Okay, where you have two things on the left, for example, hydrogen and oxygen, making something new. It's usually going to be one thing on the right. So, this would be a synthesis reaction. We have a decomposition reaction. It would be the opposite, where we'd have one thing on the left, so I'll just do this backwards, 2H2O. If you run an electric current through it, you're going to get hydrogen and oxygen. So one thing on the left, two on the right, something being broken down is decomposition. Single replacement. That's where you have something by itself. I'm going to use a general formula. So something by itself plus a compound. I'm going to give you, like in a case like this, the X replaces the Y. So we get XZ plus Y. The X kicks out the Y. It replaces it. And there's one thing replacing one thing, so it's a single replacement. A double replacement will be something like WX plus YZ, two compounds, and they swap. So we'll swap out the first ones, which is probably the metals, and get WZ plus XY. Double replacement, two compounds on the left, two different compounds on the right. Single replacement has an element and a compound on the left and a different element and a compound on the right. Finally, the last one we need to know this type is going to be combustion. Maybe some type of carbohydrate burns in oxygen 
and it makes some amount of CO2 and H2O. Okay, gotta know those. Uh, oh, one other thing I want to show you here. Don't forget polyatomic ions on table E. You'll frequently need to use these in uh, figuring out ionic and molecular equations. Very common question that you're going to see is where you have something like, uh, let's say, ammonium chloride. Okay? And you have to remember that the bond between the NH4 plus and the Cl minus is ionic. Okay? They stick together because of the opposites in charge. But the bonds between the nitrogen and the hydrogens are covalent. All right? This bond here is ionic. These bonds are covalent. So this entire molecule has both ionic and covalent bonds because there's a polyatomic ion bonded to another ion. All right, that brings us to the end of Unit 